Okay, today I am going to show you on how to set up a model edit um, using Wild Model Viewer and Photoshop. First off, I want to apologize about my mic. I don't have a very good mic, but I do get this question quite often, so I decided to do a, a quick little tutorial on how I set up my edits. Um, the first thing you want to do is get Model Viewer. Um, I'll make sure to incl include uh, a link below. Um, once you open it up and load it up, I'm currently using the Beta 5 version. There is some issues with some of the models. Um, sometimes the armors will be at the feet. Um, normally that means that you will have to cut and paste those particular items onto the model um, in Photoshop to make it work. Now I'm just going to load up one of my characters into WoW well Model Viewer. And this is one of my paladins. Um, and then what you, what you want to do is just pose your character however you want to pose them. I'm going to do an emote. Here, I'm going to sheath my weapon. Just pausing it. And this is normally how I, I pick my poses. If you need a hand in a certain position, you can rotate the image or rotate the model to get what you need. And I will highlight that certain area and then copy and paste. But I'm just gonna do something really simple today. Now, a big problem with a lot of the WoW models is clipping. Um, the way that I fix the way that clipping works is I will actually just take a, a separate screenshot of just the armor that is clipping and I will put it on top of the, the image and work it in that way. And this is a good way to actually show you on how I do that. I will, now this is the, the biggest uh, step is that instead of going to save screenshot, you wanna go to save size scre screenshot. And what this will do is it will actually create a much larger image so then it's not as pixelated. What you want to make sure is lock aspect is on and then change that number to 5,000. Um, this is the one, the, the one setting that I have found that doesn't lag my computer out. If you can go higher, you can go up to 16,000. Um, but this is just the one that I find that, that works best for me. Then what I will do is I will, once that's all saved, I will now create a new canvas in Photoshop. Now, this is the typical settings that I use for Photoshop. I'll go change it to inches, and I'll change that to 10 by 15 inches. This is what my computer works at best. If you can work higher, that's even better. Um, this is the setting that I find that doesn't lag out my computer. And I'm able to actually work in a lot of those details. I will then open up my screenshot in Photoshop. You will double click on background to make it a, a, just a normal layer. Then you'll click your magic wand. I set my tolerance to 30. This is what I've found works best for me. And then I'll just highlight all the purple areas. You wanna press shift whenever you want to include an additional section whenever you are selecting. And then you'll press delete and that will get rid of all the purple. This is almost like working with green screen. And then what I'll do is I will take this and drag it into my new layer. As you can see, it's much smaller. But if I just press shift and drag, it'll make it much larger. And because of the resolution that I, I saved it as in Wild well, Model Viewer, when I enlarge it, I don't lose any of my details and I don't get those jagged edges and low res problems that some people might have. This really does keep the integrity of uh, the model and being able to work it up, um, work it in higher res. Now, the next thing that I will do in terms of setup is that I will start going through the entire armor and separating it. Anything that is more forward or overlaying on something, um, I'll clip it away and keep it on its own layer. Mostly I do the shoulders. I just take my lasso tool, select around the image, do 
co copy and then paste. Whoops. If you press down shift and then paste, it'll, it'll paste it actually in this the exact same area so then you don't have to worry. If I get rid of that layer, as you can see, it's on its own layer. I'll go back in and I will actually erase all the pieces that I don't need. So then when it comes to the shading part, which is much later, it's a lot easier to shade and you don't have to worry about erasing stuff. And I'll do this other arm as well. Just select the layer. Paste it on top. And then I'll just go back in and erase everything that I don't need that is not part of that section. And sometimes I'll even go even deeper than that and I will separate gloves from the actual arm. So as you can see, like I said before, um, model, the models clip a lot. And to fix that, um, I normally use another screenshot to fix the thing if it's like a three quarter view, but anything that's straightforward, you can just copy and paste. I will duplicate this layer, create a new one. Then you want to go to re, uh, transform and flip horizontal. This will only flip that particular layer. And because, as you can see, as the shoulder is overlaying on that arm, because I've already separated it, all I have to do is drag it in between the arm layer and the glove layer. And then I'll have my other shoulder piece, and I now don't have to worry about it clipping. I normally will just edit the section out and I'll repaint in um, like the hair. I always repaint the, the entirety of the hair on all of my model edits. And that's, that's basic setup. Um, now to go a little bit deeper into, just to, to glance over it, not go too much deeper into it, but for when you get into the actual armors and um, getting them to look smooth and to give them more depth, what you will do is I use a nine soft round as my smudging tool. This is your smudging tool. And all you have to do is just take a, a hard Photoshop brush. It's one of the standard brushes that is included with the uh, program and just set the hardness to zero. I normally use nine because it's small enough to get into those little cracks and crevices. This is also why I work in a higher res so I can put more details into armors if it's needed. And what I will do is I will go through the entire armor. I do this for 100% of the actual image that I'm working on. And I will go in there and I will carefully smudge everything. And whenever I need to work in more details into the armor, I'll just take like a standard little black. And I use this special brush. I will include the, the brush pack that this is a part of. Um, it's, it's like a marker brush. I use it for my hair, but it's really nice because you can actually control the transparency depending on how hard you push on your tablet. It can be very dark, it can be very light, and it's also tapered, so you can go from light to dark very, very easily. It's really good for layering up color and layering up texture. But then what I'll do is I'll go in there. And basically this is just creating those shapes because this is a low low res armor set 
Um, Low-res low armor sets do require a lot more work and time to get them to look good. They, it's not like the, the, the newer sets where they're very high-res and already have like the 3D aspect to them. They're very, very flat, and they're just wrapped around the model. Um, the, newer armor, the newer armor sets aren't like that. The new armor sets um, do have those 3D edges, so you don't have to do as much work. But they do need some work in terms of smoothing out and getting in those details. So then I'll go back, once I get my little shapes uh, at least broken down, I will go back in with my smudging tool. And then I'll start blending all of those colors into one another. If I need a color that, like if something is not looking right, like there's lots of clipping and, and issues with the way that the, the models actually work, I just do a select, you hold down, uh, Alt, and you have the paintbrush, and you just do a color sampling. And that way, you don't have to sit there and fiddle with the colors. You're already using colors that are there for you, and it matches the set perfectly. And that's normally how I do my painting, is I just color sample everything and put it in. Now to create those 3D shapes, I just go in there and add a little extra to the sides, making it feel like it's 3D and wrapping around the body. And this is what is 90% of doing model editing, is pretty much just going through the entire figure, smoothing things out, painting new areas, or repainting some graphics because they're too low res, or they weren't given enough definition, and sometimes it's just changing. Like a lot of times what I'll do for people is that they love a particular armor set, but they don't like the color. Um, changing color in an armor set is actually very, very easy. Um, the way that you do that, like let's say I don't want any of this yellow. I want, I want this set to be purple. So what I'll do is I'll create a new layer, and then you just go to color. And I'll select a color of purple that I would like to have. And then what you do is just, you just paint that in. And it will keep all the highlights and darks. That are already there. Now the only thing with the color selection is that you'll no longer have the, the different colors that actually make up the armor. Like as you can see, the yellow contains browns, it can contain yellows, it can contain oranges, you will lose that whenever you're using the color option. The way to get those back is actually using an overlay. So first I'm going to do color, and then I'm going to copy this layer, and then do an overlay. And now, as you can see, it's now changed some of those colors to pinks. You can also adjust the color layer, not be as strong. And you can even get a different color from that. So, and then I'll merge that down onto 
the image and then I'll just clean it up a little bit. The biggest thing to remember is that when it comes to metals, uh, they reflect all the different colors around you. So like this, let me just finish this up here. That's a little bit cleaner. So we have these green jewels in here. I'm going to color sample some of the green. I paint a little bit over. A little over here. A little over here. I select a little bit of that purple. Put it on here. And here. And I'm going to change the layer type. And change it to overlay. The layer color. I can even change it to like saturation or something else. I'll, I'll usually say it over here, and you can see it in my videos a lot, that I'll actually just, it's a lot of just trial and error and seeing what looks, looks right for what it is. So our light looks good. And then to get it to blend a little bit better, I'll take it, a, 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 I don't know how to say this. I want to say it's Gaussian, Gaussian, I'm not sure. I want to say it's Gaussian. <laughs> so then now that that metal has some reflections, reflections on it. But that is just a really basic intro into my model edits. Um, feel free to leave a message below to let me know what more you want to see and how I do it. Um, and I can see if I can make a tutorial for it. If you have any questions, always feel free to ask. I am more than willing to help people. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it gave you a little insight to what I do and how I do it. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.